It's great that you were able to control devices connected to Samsung SmartThings through Google Home. But what about being able to make Google say whatever you want and include Google Home in your own automation routines with SmartThings? In this episode of my Making SmartThings Smarter series, we will be going over how to do just that with a community-created project called CastWeb API and an Edge driver created by T. Austin from the SmartThings community forms. This can be used for an audible notification when your laundry is done, the dryer has finished running, at a specific time of the day, or for your daily reminder to see what your favorite bearded tech guy is up to for today. Keep in mind that in order for you to do this, you will need a separate device that is always on and connected to your network running the CastWeb API program. For this video, I will be using a Raspberry Pi, but you could also use a Windows, Mac, or other Linux-based computer. While I'll be going over the installation and setup of CastWeb API in a Raspberry Pi, everything else is the same about using CastWeb API on any of the other installation options. This includes a few tips I'd like to mention before getting started. The device running the CastWeb API software must be on the same subnet as your Samsung SmartThings hub. In addition to this, you'll also want to make sure your SmartThings hub is on the same subnet as your Google Home devices. This is due to how everything communicates with each other and how discovery works. Chances are very good that your whole home network is in fact on one subnet, but it is something I wanted to mention. If you are having connectivity issues, I would suggest seeing if your wireless router has some sort of guest network set up that your devices are connected to. If it does, you'll want to make sure everything is all on the same network. It's also worth mentioning that oftentimes the guest network set up on home wireless routers is set up to prevent devices from communicating with each other. If that's the case, you will also see issues. For this project, I will be using my Raspberry Pi 4B with 4 gigs of RAM. The software is written for ARM7, so any Raspberry Pi from 2B and up should not have any issues running the software. I'd also like to mention that you will need to have Node.js installed prior to installing CastWeb API, which is something I will not be covering in this video. It is however very straightforward, and I will include a link in the description below for some helpful instructions. I also strongly encourage you to have your Raspberry Pi set up with a static IP address. If it ever changes, this integration will break until you fix it within SmartThings. To get started, first make sure all your packages are up to date. Once done, we need to install the CastWeb API packages. Do this by issuing the command sudo npm install CastWeb API CLI g. This will take a bit of time depending on your internet connection and Raspberry Pi. This process will download and install all packages required. Feel free to pause the video while everything is installed. And while you wait, why not take a look at the subscribe button? Once everything is done, we can now issue the command CastWeb API CLI to see a list of options available that can be run. Now let's check the status of CastWeb API. To do this, issue the command CastWeb API CLI status. If the output looks like mine, that means it's not running. After installation, it will not auto start and you will need to start it with the CastWeb API CLI start command. I also recommend setting this up to auto start on boot up. So that way, if your Raspberry Pi reboots for any reason, you don't have to worry about logging into it and starting the CastWeb API service. If everything was installed properly, your screen should look similar to mine. For the next step, you'll need the address listed under address. If it's showing 127.0.0.1, you'll need to grab the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You can do this by issuing the command ifconfig. Here you will see all your connections. You'll want to grab the IP address of your network connection as we will need it soon. If the IP address is different than 127.0.0.1, you can just grab that. Next, I recommend trying to browse to the IP address we just captured from a computer or mobile device that is connected to the same network as your SmartThings hub. To do this, just open a browser such as Google Chrome, IceWeasel, or Firefox, and enter in the IP address we captured, followed by a colon and the number 3000. Mine looks like this, but yours will most likely start with a 192.168 address. If you get the following page, you'll know that everything so far has been set up correctly, and we can move on to getting things added into SmartThings. The first step will be to add the Edge driver. To add the Edge driver, you'll need to be enrolled in T. Austin's channel, which I'll have a link for in the description below. Opening the link will prompt you to log into your SmartThings account, and once logged in, you'll either see an Enroll button or an Available Drivers button. If you have the Available Drivers button, you can click on it. Otherwise, click on Enroll to join the channel. Enrollment will take a few minutes, so I'd recommend waiting about 5 minutes and then refreshing the page, which you should then see the Available Drivers button to click on. Scroll down until you see Google Cast Driver, and click on Install under it. Now that the Edge Driver is installed, we'll need to go into the SmartThings app to finish setup. 
Within the SmartThings app, go to Add a New Device and select Scan under Scan for Nearby Devices. After a few moments, the Google Cast Manager device should show as automatically added to your hub. Next, navigate to the Google Cast Manager device. On the page for the Google Cast Manager device, click on the three-dot menu at the top of the screen and select Settings. Under CastWeb API host address, enter the address for your CastWeb API server. Make sure to leave the colon 3000 after your IP address. If everything has been set up properly up to this point, the status should change to connected under the main device page for the Google Cast Device Manager. After, navigate to Add New Device and scan for nearby devices again. After a few minutes, all of your discovered Google Home devices will be discovered and added to SmartThings as devices. This includes any speaker groups you have set up. Now that your Google Home devices have been added into SmartThings, you're now able to go into each device and set them to whatever room you want within SmartThings under Edit. And you can set what the different device actions do under Settings. If you plan on using Google TTS, you can also set the language under Settings as well. On the device page, you're able to see the status of your device, control the volume, and even have some limited control over media playback. Personally, I don't use Google Home devices in the SmartThings app but instead I have this set up for audible notifications throughout my home using automations. With the way things are set up currently, we can now use SmartThings routines to trigger a Google device to speak as part of an automation that is run from within SmartThings. To do this, you'll select Notify Someone as your then for a routine, and then select Play Message on Speaker. You'll then be able to select the speaker or speaker group you want to send the audible notification to, along with the actual message and voice you want to use. If you want to trigger a Google Home Audible notification outside of a SmartThings routine, such as from a Sharp Tools rule, you will need to do a few more things on your CastWeb API server to update the Google TTS service. Google TTS, or text-to-speech, is the cloud processing done to generate speech from text in a selected language and voice model. This is only needed if you want to make Google speak outside of a SmartThings routine. If you only plan to use SmartThings routines, then the next steps are not needed. Take note that how to complete these steps will depend on your installation of CastWeb API. I'll have the commands I use in the description below along with the readme file from T. Austin on how to do this update process. First we will need to update and install the Google TTS API node module to the latest version. After we will need to download a replacement file that uses the new Google TTS module. This will be a file found in the readme link. I already have mine saved. Next will be to copy the replacement file to the correct CastWeb API directory. Finally, the CastWeb API service needs to be restarted. After it comes back up, you'll be able to start having Google speak from outside SmartThings routines. This is helpful for if you have more complex automations that SmartThings routines can't handle, like my Smart Laundry Room Monitor, which will not only trigger a notification when the washer or dryer is done, but will also give a gentle reminder when wet laundry has been left in the washer for too long. Don't forget to take the wet laundry that's in the washing machine out. One major thing to keep in mind with setting up CastWeb API is that any audible notification sent to a speaker will stop any current playing music and will not resume it. The front door has been opened. While sometimes annoying to have it happen, it isn't a showstopper for me, but something to keep in mind. Some other use cases I have for audible Google notifications include when a water leak is detected, if my automower gets stuck or has an error while I'm awake, and if lightning is detected nearby or it starts to rain when my windows are open. I'd love to hear about what you plan on using your ability to make Google Home speak, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it helps spread the video to others as well. Thank you for watching and happy automating.